So we're going to use the analysis csv.py file to generate some plots of the data we've recorded. This script takes the eg data and applies some minimal processing such as bandpass notch filters, takes the markers generated to segment the data into epochs and removes any potentially bad epochs. So we're going to run this and as we see no epochs have been rejected as signaled here. And these are the plots that we can generate. There is one plot for each of the eight channels that we've recorded. What we expect to see here is an effect around parietal and central areas in the event-related potential. So a difference between the targets, the red oval stimuli, and the non-targets, so the blue squares. By targets, we mean the infrequent stimuli that are different from the standard ones occurring more frequently. And that is the oddball. For the targets, we have the orange graphs. For the non-targets, we have the blue ones. Starting with TP9, no difference in the signal is to be expected here, not only because of the temporal position of the electrode, but also because the analysis script re-references the signal to both mastoids, so not only TP10, where we had placed the unipolar reference, but also to TP9, so the average of both. And that's why you get the flat lines here, as expected. Moving on to OZ, that is around the visual area of the brain, we already start to see a small effect, where the orange graph starts to be a little bit more positive than the blue one. Moving closer to the positions of interest, going over to PO3 and to PO4, the effect uh, starts to become a bit more clear, so the difference between the graphs. And going over to the regions of interest, so that was uh, around the parietal and the central areas, that is where the cognitive processing happens. So in this experiment, we are not strictly focusing visual functions, but we are interested in how the brain distinguishes between frequent and deviant stimuli. So going to PZ, we have a big difference. We have this positive peak, uh, whose onset is around 300 millisecond, and goes over here uh, in, a, in a positive peak. That is only visible for the targets compared to the non-targets. The same applies to CP1, CP2, and CZ. As you see here, a nice positive peak, starting at around 300 milliseconds, whereas the non-targets remain relatively flat. So this is how, with little preparation, a short experiment and minimal data processing, the Mentalab Explorer can yield data that is consistent with the P300 literature.